welcome back to the video. We've got the uh, monitor reassembled. Um, we've got the plug, which looks like it can actually be plugged in with this male counterpart. So if you want to, so you can actually plug it into the back of, say, the uh, Master Compact supply there, which has got um, an output for a monitor. So let's plug it in. And there was a bit of activity. Definitely some static, some flyback lines just came up. Yep, there's definitely some noise, contrast, brightness. Oh, that's a bit flickery. Let's put that back down. That looks like it's ready to receive an input. Uh, let's try something, see if we get something being displayed. It's actually a good test to see if the Master Compact boots up. So, yeah, nothing being displayed on the screen. That actually helps me troubleshoot the problem with that a little bit further. Right, let's see if we can find something else that will give us a possible output. So here's our test mule. This is a Texas Instruments TI-994A, which, whoever well, doesn't look it, doesn't seem to have that many inputs and outputs, was an incredibly expandable machine, especially when you plug things into this side socket here. It had... A ROM slot on the front for sticking in ROMs, joystick port on the side, nothing there, single output on the back for video, and we're going to plug this one in actually, see if this actually works, we can get something on the screen. Got the power supply plugged in here, so the power supply goes into the back like so. And there is a power switch on the front. There was a bit of a flicker on the screen. I'm not sure if we're getting anything out of it. So it reckons it's on. Oh, look at that. So it might be that the cable isn't wired. For the Texas Instruments. I do need to do a video on this one at some point because it's quite an interesting machine. It was sort of, in some ways, it was the BBC Micro for America, given its sort of expandability. Also, it's really cool because it's got this nice brushed aluminium finish. Right, let's see if we can find something else that may work with this TV. The next test subject is this really early BBC Micro. You can tell it says BBC Micro Computer. It has the older rough case and one thing that the later ones have was they actually had this support pillar on the back here, whereas this one doesn't. You can see why they probably put it in because you can easily go like that. Anyway, let's see if it blows up. And we have life. A little bit bright, so let's just bring the brightness. Okay, can't do anything with the brightness. Let's see if we can do anything with the contrast. There we are. Oh, this one appears to have a sideways ROM. Spellmaster. Uh, star ROMs? Nope, that doesn't do anything. Control break. Uh, star help. There you are. So, oh, we got Wordwise plus two. Spellmaster. So we've got Wordwise plus, okay. Uh, star word. Not 
sure. Anyway, let's just do a control break again. Yep, so we've got 32k. Uh, mood. Mode 2. Mm, color. One of my favorites I always used to do was 1, 2, 3, 4, because that would just produce this green background. And then it would fill up the screen with a lovely green background. That's actually monitoring very well. Ignore the flicker. That's doing a lovely little job, that, actually. It's a very clear picture. Very clear indeed. You can't quite see it on the camera, but it is really sharp. Not bad at all. Um, what else could we try? Could do star help again. So we've got DFS, so that's disk filing system 0.9. We've got OS 1.2, which is quite normal. Word wise, plus two. So it could be star word wise. <laughs> there you go. Look at that. We have a built-in word processor, so we could load new text. It's asking us to actually enter a file name, so let's just escape that. So press a choice. We could do print menu. We could load text to cursor. We could load new text. We could save entire text. So let's try nine. Save segment, load segment, save mark text. Go back to the main menu again. So spool text. Oh, no, don't want to do that because it needs a file. Um, almost by computer concepts. Computer Concepts, um, big software company in the Acorn days. Um, they produced, I think, an art program that was actually bought by Corel. Uh, it was Zara Draw or something. I can't remember. It's a long time ago, sort of late 90s. But Corel, of Corel Draw fame or Corel Draw, actually bought uh, the rights to produce the software, so it became Coral Zara. But yeah, computer concepts were huge, certainly in the um, Acorn scene. Right, we have a cat just about to go onto the keyboard. What are you going to do? You're going to go round the... Oh, you're going to go round the back. And you're going to go... What are you going to do? Up onto the VDU. Across onto the shelf, down to the wrist PC. And off he goes. Oh, escape edit menu. Look at that. Do escape again. And you could do save entire text if you wanted. So escape is edit mode. So you could. This is what you would use to obviously write and author your documents. Oh, we have another cat. That's Minmu, or Kif. A little bit snotty at the moment, he's got a bit of a cold. He also has no tail. Uh, dog bit his tail when he was just a kitten, and we had to have the tail removed. Oh, he's taken a more uh, sensible approach. He's going sort of round the back. There he goes, he's gone as well. Uh, see break. Ah, break just takes you back to there. So escape. Yeah, still there. That's pretty cool. So to quit, you'd have to do a control break, which is like pressing the reset button. And we're back there. So if we go back into Wordwise, I bet that's probably actually gone. Yeah, if you go to edit. Oh, it is still. Oh, it's actually kept it in RAM. Okay, that's pretty cool. So I reckon if you turn the machine off and on, that would have gone. So let's go back, control break. Oh, control break again. There we are. 
let's do the standard 10 print hello world could think of other things to print but I won't 20 go to 10 Keyboard's actually working nicely. Run. There we are. That's working really well, actually. Not bad at all. So, what I'm going to do is... This is actually quite a useful monitor for me to use um, for my various beeps. I'm actually going to turn this one off because I don't want the uh, power supply popping all over my leg. So this is actually quite a useful monitor for the various beebs that I have. I've got um, this one. I've also got a number of masters hanging around. I'm actually really impressed that this one's just worked. And it's still got, I think, in its original cover, or uh, what would also be sort of termed as the ashtray. It's usually they get popped down and then uh, all manner of rubbish can get in there. Usually these were full of a um, ziff socket. So zero insertion for sockets, you can actually put additional ROMs in there. Very impressive little machines these, this is sort of really where my interest in computing started was with the, um, the BBC Micro. And here you have one of the first of a generation, not obviously Atom aside and the 6502 board that Acorn also produced before this, but one of the first of a school generation and one of the last. There's history from here to there. So what I'll be doing is putting this one back into the box, but also making sure that the box is clean because I don't really want to get anything in there. Anyway, if you have found this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell and I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. And see you soon.